Hello, I'm M.K. Davis. I want to talk a little bit about the Patterson film and particularly Frame 350, uh, the very one that was used by Todd Gatewood uh, to enhance uh, to such a, a wonderful level of detail. And I want to explain. Um, exactly how that was able to do that uh, and let's let's just go right into it hold on here uh oh there we go All right, here we are. This is the, the original foot, uh, frame right here that he used. And this is a frame uh, from a Zebra Chrome print that if this right here did not exist on the right, the one on the left would be the clearest frame available. And you see they're nowhere near each other in clarity. Both are frame 350. A gentleman by the name of Bruce Bonney. There we go. Let me see. I got so much stuff up here now. That's the problem right there. Stuff is covering stuff. A whole bunch of stuff has been covered up. There we go. This right here is the paper that Bruce Bonney wrote. And the reason why this image has come to us is because of an argument. Now, Bruce Bonney got his raw images off the original film and he tells you that he don't tell you who but he got it from uh, Eric I mean not Eric but uh, Rene de Hinden and uh, de Hinden at the time had the original film uh, in his possession the one that was um, in the camera And they got in an argument. He got in an argument with uh, John Eric Beckyard. And John Beckyard, for those of us who've been around a while, he w a lot of people regarded him as kind of a nut. Uh, but he made a lot of a lot of uh, allegations about the film. And, and if you kind of look into the matter, he he was all around that film. Uh, so he had lots of connections to it. Uh, let me just read you what, what Bruce Bonney said. Uh, John Beckyard reported in the June 1981 issue of Bigfoot Co-op that he sees a baby Sasquatch creature in the patterson Gimlin film that is hanging on for dear life to the Sasquatch mama creature. I was amazed by this bizarre announcement because I have never seen a baby Sasquatch in the film and I know that the creature is walking alone on a sandbar. I say that I know because I am working with the color photographs taken directly from the original film, the same film that Roger Patterson was running in his camera at Bluff Creek. Now, that being said, listen to what he says. I am working from color photographs taken directly from the original film. Is that the original? No. Uh, you, ma you make a color photograph. He goes into He talks about how he did it. Uh, in January 1980, I participated in the first program to produce high-quality color photographs 
from the original Patterson Gimlin film. The original 16 millimeter Kodachrome 2 film was first enlarged and printed on 4 by 5 inch Kodak Ektachrome duplicating film. Okay, so it was enlarged optically, not, not digital. These 4 by 5 inch color transparencies were then contact printed on Ilford Cibachrome A color print material, the sharpest color printing paper available. This printing sequence resulted in the sharpest and clearest color prints ever made of the best frames of the film, having the highest resolution and greatest color fidelity yet produced. For the first time, we have prints which clearly show the creature's face with eyes, nostrils, and lips. The maximum limit of anatomical resolution in the three sharpest cibachrome prints is about one, quart, one centimeter, meaning that details of the creature's body larger than one square centimeter in area are visible in the prints and are capable of basic identification. So, if the Sasquatch mama creature is carrying a baby in the film, then the baby must be smaller than one cubic centimeter in volume, smaller than a marble or a grape because it is not visible in the Cibachrome prints. When analyzing fine detail in the film, it is absolutely vital to work with the original film or with a copy produced directly from the, uh, the original film, because the images of the creature loses sharpness and clarity every time it is made, a copy is made. Excuse me, my glasses. Okay, image quality declines rapidly when frames of the film are enlarged because of imperfections in the optical systems of the copy camera and the enlarger and the limited recording capacity of the copy film and printing papers. All right, now let's go back. Okay, this is, front, this is on paper right here. It, it's a scan of one of the Cibachrome prints that Bruce Bonney made. Let's just go get it large. Which one has got the most resolution? Well, clearly this one does. I, I'm, I'm not even blown. Let's get them the same size. That's a little too big. Let's try one. What does it go to? 200. Let's try 150. Now. Well, that's closer. I'll go one forty. All right. This is the Cibre Chrome print scanned at high resolution that Bonnie was talking about. This is the exact same frame, but it's higher. And why is it higher? Because this right here, if, uh, if Mr. Gatewood had worked with this, he would not have been able to do what he did with this one. It makes that much difference. 
I'll show you how much difference it makes. This is my son, Brian, and that's a full facial. That's, uh, uh, I think that thing is about seven and a half feet tall, something like that. And it hasn't lost that much. That's made from that original. How was I able to do that? And I had more people tell me, you can't do that. I had to do it to prove that I could. But let's, let's go back to this. Um, I'm going to boost this one right here. Let me just do that. Wrong one. Look, just boosting the contrast. how much superior it is. Now, why is it superior? Because this, this image here on the left, over here, has been taken one more step than this image. It's, had, it's been filtered Number one, it's, it's, it wasn't produced on paper. And when you produce it on paper, it has to go through the emulsions that are on the paper, strike the white background of paper, and come back through the emulsions and expose. So it's made two passes through emulsion, and it loses resolution when you do that. This was exposed onto transparent material for the purpose of projection and only passed through the emulsions once. So it's, it, it is, as it should be, sharper than this one. And we're talking about we, it moves the threshold up of possibilities. Uh, later on, when when uh, technology improves and comes along, this one's at a different threshold than this one. This one is a, you're able to enhance better than this one. Okay, so there's only one of these images that exists because that's all that came out of that argument with Bruce Bonney and John Eric Beckyord. They produced this because of an argument about whether there was a, a baby Sasquatch in the Patterson film. And if they had not, we wouldn't have this image right here. But we should be thankful that they did have that argument and that Bruce Bonney, Bruce Bonney got in so much trouble because this, this image was made that uh, De Hinden, Rene De Hinden, threatened to end his life. And he went into hiding. Okay, well, this makes it to the, uh, to the Internet and it's only like 90-something DPI. And you say, how can you blow something up that's only 90 DPI? And the reason why is because it was enlarged optically first. And when you enlarge something optically first, it is at its best and densest. 
And then it was scanned at 90-something. 90 90, I think it was 93 DPI. So uh, let me show you why it's red, why it's red-tinted. Because somebody knew and understood, and that somebody is Bruce Bonney, knew and understood that there are uh, problems when you try to enlarge with lensing defects. And it's called chromatic aberration. The light's coming in like this. It hits the lens and it brings it to a focus with all these colors. Red, green, and blue. But they don't all go to this focus right here. You see, they're, they're focusing at different places. So that creates haze or unsharpness. And when you put it through a filter, you put it through the filter that elim eliminates the wavelengths of light that ca are causing the unsharpness. And it comes out monochrome, but at its very, very, very sharpness. In, in very sharp quality. The sharpest possible quality. And we'll look at it again. So this, this on the left, this image right here, it has not been treated for chromatic aberration. Even though it's pretty good, it don't approach this one because this one's been filtered for chromatic aberration and it was printed on a transparency where it only passed once onto the emulsion. It was enlarged optically before it was scanned. So it is a singularly the best image from the Patterson film, period. Mr. Gatewood asked me when he contacted me that I need the best image from the film to work with. So I sent him this. And now, you know, even now, this is propagated out on the net. Uh, you, you find various qualities of this. Uh, you have to still go back to that original image that was put out there. And poor Bruce Bonney for, for being uh, knowledgeable and absolutely knowing what he was talking about has ha been having to hide all these years. You can improve this one with, with modern technology, but it, you apply the same improvement to this one and it'll boost it far, far better. Now, let's... Uh, let me go back... I don't know if you've ever worn trifocals, but when you're at a computer, it is hard to find to find focus with your glasses. Okay, it's there somewhere. That's not the one I wanted, actually. Let's see. Watermark. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, the, the, our names uh, for the purpose of uh, acknowledgement. 
Now, let me just put this up here with these others. This right here is within reach of this with modern enhancement techniques. This came off the original film off of transparency and d due to an argument about whether there was a baby on her or not uh, and it only went once through onto the emulsion and it was filtered for a chromatic aberration. So it put it within reach of these enhancement techniques. Wow. There's the eye. See right here? There's nothing on this one that's not on this one. But it sure is a lot easier to look at. So no one understand that you, we all, we all need to get behind this image. Because it is authentic and it is the face of a Sasquatch 100%. It's at the top. Unless we find the original film to repeat that process, this one will remain at the top. You find that original film and it, uh, all H-E-L-L is going to break loose. That's why I would like to encourage you, every one of you who's interested in this subject, to stare at that frame with confidence. And I hope you I've explained it a little better this time. But at any rate, uh, I thank you for your time.